With studios at Sunset and Vine in Hollywood, this is Channel 4, KNBH. It's better to be lucky than smart. To win the two biggest prizes in Hollywood in one year. This and this. The following program is brought to you in living color. News service continues with world and national news. Tom Brokaw has details. In and for the city of Los Angeles. In and for the city of Los Angeles. And here's another aftershock or another earthquake uh, happening right now. I'm not sure which. I'm going to get under this desk. I apologize for the theatrics. I have OJ in the car. This is where the backburn and the fire are meeting. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Now, a milestone event as we celebrate Channel 4's 60th anniversary. Good evening. I'm Paul Moyer. And I'm Colleen Williams. We're celebrating a special evening here at Channel 4 60 years of serving you. Some of the greatest moments in this country have happened right here in Southern California. Granted, we've had our share of disasters and heartache, but we've also had a lot of memories filled with joy. So the show is about you and about us. And a relationship now going on for 60 years. January 16, 1949. Life is good. Los Angeles is thawing out from its first recorded snowfall. Gas costs 17 cents a gallon. Bread, 14 cents a loaf. It's also the day a lifelong friend is born. At 6.59 p.m., KNBH is on the air. This is KNBH, Channel 4. KNBH, which later became KNBC, transmitted its first images from a tower high atop Mount Wilson. The Pickard family was the top attraction. The popular country music act starred in the first live show. KNBH broadcast three hours that day, then signed off. Channel 4's popular early shows include TV's first great lover, Continental, The Judy Splinters and Shirley Dinsdale Show, Design for Women, and Dusty Walker Sings. Production was brisk. Orchestra musicians, camera crews, props, Radio dominated the airwaves, but not for long. While there were only 80,000 TVs in town, entertainment shows quickly took root and TV news planted its first seed. Less than four months on the air, KNBH launched its first newscast. The uh, news departments in those days, in the 40s, were lost leaders. Uh, they would do news, but it would just be rip and read. Veteran newsreel man Norman Alley and his son Dexter had a different idea. Shoot and broadcast local news. Ford dealers sponsored the show. You were everything. You were a reporter, you were a researcher, you were a, a public relations uh, expert. Flames raced through the grandstand of the beautiful Hollywood Park racetrack in Inglewood last night. The fire causing approximately $10 million worth of damage at the tracks of lakes and flowers. There were no anchors. Just a voice for the 10-minute newscast. In 1959, things changed. When the station first started broadcasting the news, it was the Channel 4 News. And then they decided, well, they need a personality. So then it was Jack Latham and the Channel 4 News. 1959's big stories, the crash of that American airliner into New York's East River. The year just closed was marked by the recurrence of natural disasters. Right now, work is actually underway for the construction of the new Dodger home in Chavez Ravine. Last season, the Dodgers finished out in Memorial Coliseum before capacity crowds. Channel 4 News knit to together Ashley. Southern California in a way. It was the one central gathering place every night at 6 and again at 11. As the news department changed and expanded, so did the name of the station. KNBH became KRCA, then KNBC. The changes also brought a new home. Our Sunset and Vine operation moved to Burbank. Construction teams built it from the ground up. Inside, state-of-the-art studios designed by TV's best. This is an aerial view back in 1960. As KNBC settled into the community, an impressive list of journalists began working here. It's a legacy that continues today. It was a star-studded place 
And we had our stars on the new set, too. We had Jess Marlowe anchoring the five. Wanted in the slaying of Dr. Martin Luther King as actually being James Earl Ray. Then Tom Snyder on the six. To all of you who wired and called and wrote. Tom Brokaw on the 11. Good evening. I'm Tom Brokaw. Brian Gumbel was doing the sports. In baseball, the name of the game is winning. Pat Sajak was doing the weather. Well, we didn't get any shower activity of any significance today. I had to pinch myself to see that I wasn't dreaming. It was pretty heady company to be to be around. People kept pouring into KNBC because it was the place to be. Paul Moyer, Colleen Williams, uh, Nick Clooney, Keith Morrison. Uh, the list goes on and on. Fred and Fritz. Sitting there and seeing Laurel and Fresnel, and Conan. I never thought I'd be working alongside all of these people. The first time I came onto the lot, I thought, man, this is something for a kid from Chino to be working at a big, big company. We used to look at tapes of KNBC. That was where we all wanted to be, but it would never be possible. You could dream. For every journalist who's walked the halls of KNBC, so has the responsibility to cover the biggest stories of our time. We are part of the fabric of this community. We have been there with Southern California through fires and floods and earthquakes and civil unrest. We've been there. We've been part of it. I think queer television is at its best to be able to tell those stories about major events that happen in our community. If there was real trouble, as there often was, or if there was real joy and won the World Series, people tuned in to sort of the center of gravity, which was their local television station. When something happens that's important, they trust you to give them the information in the right way. And that's, that's kind of a sacred trust. The news is, to a certain extent, a, a public trust and a public obligation. You have a responsibility there to be more than just entertaining. You have to remember that they're relying on you and they really believe that you're telling them the truth. So you better be doing that. I had covered the uh, Kennedy campaign very closely in California, up and down the coast. We can make sure that we start to work together, blacks and white Indians and Mexican Americans. Los Angeles was fixated on two things that day, the state primary and the LA Dodgers. Don Drysdale just pitched his sixth, no, shut up. Victory would come to Kennedy too. I was a block away. Um, at the headquarters for the uh, senatorial campaign. Dolores Huerta, who is an old friend of mine and has worked with the union. We went door to door uh, to ask people to vote for Robert Kennedy, and the turnout was incredible. Now it's on to Chicago and let's win there. Thank you very much. He was actually supposed to be coming with me. We had a ballroom. And that was supposed to be his first stop. And instead, they took him back into the kitchen. When we got to the doorway, that's when the shots uh, broke up. We started hearing people screaming and yelling. Rayford Johnson had been our sportscaster, and he was at his side when those fatal shots were fired. It was probably a half hour before we were made aware of the circumstances there. Senator Kennedy's condition is still described as extremely critical as to life. I went to the hospital and uh, sat on the curb outside waiting for those medical updates all night long. KNBC's crash unit brought the story live to viewers who had survived an already turbulent year. You wondered what was going on, what, where the world was going to end. Dr. King had been killed earlier that year. There had been urban riots all over the country. I became fascinated with Watts. I got there after the big Watts blow up in the fall of 1965. Those riots lasted six days, triggered by accusations of police brutality and brewing racial tensions. The crews had uh, station wagons that they were attacking. Engine 56 Roger. Most of the buildings are on fire at the present time. So I told them we we're going to fire a few warning shots in the air to keep them back, that we mean business. It's been a war, one way war all along. It's just been just oppression by white on black. And so we must say to America, we want all of our rights. 
More than 30 people died in the Watts uprising. A thousand hurt, including comedian Dick Gregory. A year later, Muhammad Ali would visit after another series of riots. I don't think people understood the amount of anger that was going to come out of this community if the verdict uh, went against them. The Rodney King trial uh, was not just about one man. It was incredibly important. The great concern about inflaming the community. Can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Vermont was on fire on both sides. There was, you know, uh, alarms going off. We have a fireman shot. We have a fireman shot. It was at night, and there was a lot of gunfire. Tonight, un unprecedented action. The entire city of Los Angeles is under curfew. It lasted for so long, and you wonder where are the police? When are they going to stop this? Why are you doing this? Why, why did they get off? Yeah, what are you doing? doing it? Vandals had moved up La Brea. They started a fire in the Sammy's camera store. And all of the people in the neighborhood helped each other to put the thing out. Rocks, bottles tossed at our van. A guy came up to my cameraman, Pete Garrow, and I, pulled a gun on us. I said to myself, now I'm going to feel what it's like to get shot. The L.A. riots lasted seven days, killed more than 50, and caused $1 billion in damage. It was L.A. It just made me really sad. Hell no, we won't do it. Hell no. There were all sorts of uh, protests and reactions, and the young people were disenfranchised from the general public. How do they feel about the anti-war demonstrations back in the state? Well, they don't like it. So we're talking about rebellion, uh, drugs, and sex. You had flower children everywhere. I mean, there was more dope smoke in California in those days, I think, than in any other time in the history of mankind. Definitely, there was a hippie movement uh, in America. But one man would destroy the summer of love all in one night. The Manson family comes along uh, looking like typical hippies, but they were mass murderers. What do you expect to do in there today? Uh, they won't let me do anything. From the vaults of Channel 4's archives, <laughs> moments that changed our lives forever. One positive thought. What does that mean? Are you uh, guilty of any murders? Are you guilty of plotting any murders? I killed a chicken once. Any human felt... beings? No. No. I think next to Jack the Ripper, Manson is probably the most famous mass murderer ever. The break-in at the home where Sharon Tate was living, and she and four of the guests at the house were killed. There was the break-in again at the home of uh, Lino and Rosemary LaBianca, and they were murdered. Overnight, the sale of guns and guard dogs and the use of private security services rose dramatically. It was madness. I think we learned uh, in reporting some of that story. A bloody revolution. That we really don't need to inflame the audience, to incite fear, but to, to give them information. He'll be out. All the people will be out. The Manson case was the biggest publicity murder case that the LADA's office had ever had. Channel 4 was there every day. It could take four or five months just to get a jury. You're the jury. You're the court. You're the whole thing. If you stand for it, you're a part of it. The district attorney's office and I personally and the Los Angeles Police Department are very, very pleased with the verdict. The Van Houten retrial is now one month old. Manson has also become kind of a metaphor for evil. He's come to represent the dark and malignant side of humanity. And Helter Skelter became the biggest selling true crime book in publishing history. I don't have any confusion. I don't have any guilt. I know what I've done, and no man can judge me. What's your name? Huh? I think that fear at that time was almost equal to the fear when Charlie Manson was running around. People were living in fear because there was a madman traveling up and down the freeway system, parachuting into neighborhoods, and doing god-awful things. It was August 31st of 1985. And I'll never forget Dino Castro was my cameraman. And as Dino was driving south on the uh, 5 freeway through Boyle Heights, 
and I saw a helicopter just flying, buzzing around, buzzing around. My pager goes off. There's something going on in East LA. And we pulled up the street called Hubbard Street, and there was a ton of people around this uh, squad car. And I could see a guy in the back seat of the car bandaged up. What's your name? They're saying, what's your name? Who are you? And he goes, it's me, man. It's me. Yeah. He was confessing right there that he was a night stalker. Bill Lagatuda. Linda Alvarez. Good evening. He is a mystery man. Richard Ramirez was captured today. This is the man police say is responsible for 16 murders. Among the hundreds gathered outside the police station, there's an almost carnival-like atmosphere of celebration. One hesitates to use these kinds of words in journalism, but he had a classically demonic look. As a news person, you want exclusives and you want to tell you know, the public what's going on out there. That was a great day in, in KNBC history, I think. The city could finally open their windows on a very hot summer night and rest in peace. Now, a Channel 4 News special report. I was the second reporter on the scene when Nicole Brown Simpson's body and Ron Goldman's body were out there right in front of the house. Have you been told you're under arrest, OJ? This is AC. I have OJ in the car. Somehow, Conan Nolan got in front of the white Bronco. He's still alive, but he got a gun to his head. People from neighborhoods had come onto the freeway. I did not, could not, and would not have committed this uh, crime. I spent a year of my life at the criminal courthouse downtown. All you have to do is look at the morning paper. The verdict is in. I believe we have tape of the reaction here at El Camino College shortly after the verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Following the Simpson trial, my assignment was to go to Rockingham. I just want to support my family. and. Uh, there are people out there that don't want me to do that. Oh, it's a great feeling anytime you get an exclusive get that big. There had not been a celebrity criminal case with such public interest since the Roman Polanski trial in 1978. The cameras had waited more than an hour before director Roman Polanski arrived in court. He's accused of drugging and raping a 13-year-old Woodland Hills girl. He pled not guilty to all charges. That I'm innocent and I can't wait to be vindicated. Roman Polanski wanted to leave the country, and then he says, well, I'm going to come back. Well, tell us about that trip. Where and I got right up next to him, and I said, will you come back? Will I come back? Sir, I what certainly you, will. Yeah. What do you he never returned and recently asked for the case to be dismissed. Besides the news department, our studios here in Burbank are home to some very, very big Hollywood productions, and you never know who you're going to run into. That building rocked at that time, and we had Johnny Carson down the hall this way. We had Rowan and Martin's left in that way. Red Fox did a series there. It'll be warm. I mean, here I am. I'm walking through, and there's Flip Wilson's down the hall and Laugh-In's down the hall. We would see people like... George Burns coming to do stuff. Five foot, 10 inches tall. You'd be coming out of the studio at night and standing there waiting to talk to you would be Andy Williams, who had you know just finished the show and wanted to know what was happening. As production grew at NBC in the early 70s, a change was afoot on the air. For women, it was, it was a pretty tough time. There were no women on the air. It was truly a man's world. So they called me in one day and said, we're going to try co-anchor with you. I said, really? Who? Kelly Lang. Kelly? The Los Angeles City Council made I respected her when she came on. I think the audience did, too. I was the first woman hired by NBC around the country to co-anchor the news. All right, Paul, in just a couple of minutes from now, Brian Gumbel will join us. They talk about breaking the ceiling. Uh, she did that in large measure. And my palms are still bleeding from the glass ceiling, you know. Other changes were to come that changed TV's landscape even more. Angeles, so you stay with us, okay? until that moment the Latino culture had really been not demonstrative about rights. The moment, the Chicano moratorium, a protest during which journalist Ruben Salazar was killed by a sheriff's tear gas canister. The local media didn't have much representation from the uh, Latino community. With progress came history. Heck, it was called Oil Island Esters. Vicki. Keith, it happened just a couple of minutes ago. The final vote. I became the first female Hispanic who was hired here at KNBC. Linda Alvarez. It was a thrill to be able to anchor weekdays and to be the first Latina truly 
was an honor. Back to Paul for another check of traffic. She played a huge role in my career without meeting her before I got into the business. She broke a barrier for me. The ranks of African-American reporters grew too during Mayor Bradley's era. Brian Gumbel, Brian. We start off with your old hometown, Paul. In Pittsburgh this afternoon, the hookers believe the man has settled on prostitutes. The city of Vernon suspended another six of its firefighters. For an old Trotman, New Center 4. I see it as a tremendous opportunity to um, show people that People who look like me aren't always victims and villains on the evening news. We can tell the stories. We have an update now on a breaking news story. And Asian reporters defined their roles. There were these very prominent, very qualified female Asian anchors and reporters. We'll have a whole new look. But there just weren't that many males. And so it was exciting to be sort of at the forefront of that, that new wave. It was very heartening to me when I look on television, whatever channel I'm looking at, it is the United Nations of, of, of the news media. What you're about to see now is one of the most clever promotional campaigns ever, starring our guys, Fritz and Fred. Fred Rogan, Fritz Coleman. Fred is all sports, Fritz is all weather. We are two of the luckiest people on the face of the earth. Fred is all show, Fritz is something else. Because it was that campaign like that really Fred. bolted Fritz us and also the television station. And I really didn't understand the power of television as a medium for advertising or promotion until we started with the Fritz said it would be like this promotion or the Fritz and Fred competitions. Fritz and Fred, good sports through all kinds of weather. Please welcome Fritz Coleman. The campaign launched Fritz and Fred to national prominence. It's Fritz. <laughs> We're real happy to have him here tonight, Kevin Nealon. We had David Spade, we had Sam Kinison, uh, Jim Carrey. Here they come, <laughs> an award-winning salute to Rogan's all-star heroes. And Fred's Here's popular Kevin blooper show. France, a land known for the thrill of victory and the agony of the tree. <laughs> We're proud to say that Los Angeles is the sports capital of the world. That's Chick Hearn, our sportscaster from 1957 to 1966. Fernando Valenzuela soon will begin his sixth full year as a Dodgers starter. Uh, this was not a good night for the Lakers in New Jersey. These two teams know each other well. So here he is now, ladies and gentlemen, waste the hand around the clock. That's Miss North America, all the ships to see. Here's Ross. Former Dodger announcer Ross Porter anchored here. So did gold medal Olympian Rafer Johnson. And how about professional basketball? Were you plan on playing it after college? Well, right now I do. It all depends. When I first got there, I was doing weekends. Now here is Mr. Gumbel and all the sports for Thursday night. At the time, the Dodgers were a dominant franchise. Bill Russell has not been playing an awful lot of shortstop down here. The Showtime Lakers. Wow. The prettiest play of the night belonged to Magic Johnson. You think back to Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all on the same court. It's Hollywood. This is where stories are written. I knew L.A. loved him, but I didn't know L.A. loved us this much. <laughs> and he walked it. The L.A. Dodgers would feel the love with this pivotal moment. Look who's coming up. You always remember where you were when Kirk Gibson hit that home run. All year long, they looked to him to light the fire until he was physically unable to start tonight. He laid in the training room the entire game. And he told a clubhouse man, Go down and tell Tommy I'll be there. A clubhouse custodian, he called me, he said, Gibson's got his uniform on. I said, what? And here comes Kirk with his bat, using it almost like a cane. The crowd, the feeling that they showed. But the game right now is at the plate. The moment came where he hit that backdoor slider. Launched the ball into the right field pavilion. And I never saw the ball. All I saw was Conseco. Going back, back, back. High fly ball into right field. She is gone. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. I've seen a lot of great home runs, but I never saw one that had the drama attached to it like this one. Taken hostage live on the air, behind the scenes of this dramatic moment. Here's another aftershock or another earthquake uh, happening right now. And remember sure this? I'm going to get under this desk. I apologize for the theatrics. Mother Nature catches us by surprise okay. when Channel 4's 60-year celebration returns. Five, 
But first, a peek inside our vaults at the 1957 Academy Awards. This and this. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The following program is brought to you in living color. Welcome back to Channel 4's 60th Anniversary Celebration. And here's another aftershock or another earthquake uh, happening right now. I'm not sure which. I'm going to get under this desk. I apologize for the theatrics. Okay. This is live. This is what's happening right now. <laughs> Nothing reminds everybody that we're in this together than an earthquake. An earthquake of shattering force hit California with a resounding rumble just before dawn today. Yeah, at Come least back, you're, you're seeing the shaking. Yeah. When the bed moved, everything fell on top of me. People helping each other here at this uh, collapsed apartment complex in Northridge. This section of Interstate 14 collapsed. Right now we're getting up on the freeway. Laurel literally was climbing up the girders of the 10 freeway the Santa Monica Freeway, where it collapsed. We met a guy named Leo at the pub who ran the public storage underneath the freeway. I was dragging the cable with a camera and going live at the same time. And she tossed the mic up. They caught it, and Leo picks it up. Leo, my hero. The picture you're looking at now is, the, uh, is a picture of two cars that were driving down the freeway. For the first few minutes, that's who was on the air. Oh, that may have been a propane tank right there. That Wildfires hit, you know, everybody goes to their places and does, you know, they do their jobs. When the smoke had cleared, four more homes had been lost in Devore. As these winds pick up again, and this fire is making yet another run. The first of the big brush fires began on the last day of 1958. But fire can turn on you quickly. This is where the back burn and the fire are meeting. What you want to watch here are the embers to see which way they go. The fire's going to hit here, guys. You better get out. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Okay, Chuck. Okay, um... Drop this stuff in. Go! Just drive! 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 Hot rock! Drive! Drive! When I tell you, it was a wall of flames. I'm not kidding you. I could see nothing in front of me except thick smoke. Hey, get in my truck! Get in the truck! My God! Band caught fire. Bringing you the latest information requires the best technology. We have created industry standards. There is the split screen effect. And the chroma key, which allows background changes. And that's not all. That's amazing. You know, newswire machines, typewriters, lots of swearing, uh, cigarette smoking. Well, then forget the clack, 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 clack. We are getting computerized around here, you see. Channel 4 was one of the first newsrooms to go to computer. And, you know, then I realized they were the first to do a lot of things. Okay. First to broadcast live from the ocean. That's Florence Chadwick's swim to Catalina. First to broadcast both color and aerial images of the Rose Parade. In 1974, we added our own chopper, bringing you powerful images from the air. Enforcement. When I first started doing this, we were using film. There was no live camera crew. We used to run out and we'd shoot things on film. And we'd have to race it back on a motorcycle. It's laughable of how we used to get on the air. And now we're digital. You can get the news anywhere. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your computer. The whole media landscape is being transformed. And I'm not sure anybody really knows what it's going to look like in a couple of years. A lot of the breaking news stories we see, we see people taking out their cell phones, taking pictures and emailing them to us. Some of the technologies that now exist, such as Twitter and Flickr, have people immediately becoming their own reporters. Channel 4 has multiple ways to communicate with you immediately, like traditional Channel 4, our NBC LA website, and digital channel News Raw. Hi everyone, Macalo Medina with your here on Digital 4.2. In our traditional broadcast, uh, we can do only so much. News Raw 
uh, allows us a, a third dimension where a reporter can talk about how she got to this point. We have a raw video as it came into our newsroom. What intrigues me is this next generation of the, I want it, I want it now, and I want it just for me. We had no idea where television was gonna go. There's something out there, but I have no idea what it is. Never lose fact that it started in a little box. This is a broadcast station, which means it broadcasts to everybody from a little tower up on Mount Wilson. Television brings people together. There'll be nothing to replace that. I'm Paul Moyer. And I'm Colleen Williams. Elliot Ford, good afternoon, everyone. The FBI has pinned down the identification... Jess Marlowe and Tom Snyder led the expansion of 15-minute local newscasts to one hour. A federal grand jury in Washington has indicted 11 members of the Church of Scientology on charges... He was the king of this place for many years, sort of the Walter Cronkite of Los Angeles news. Tom Snyder changed the face of local news. The first belongs to Mr. Jerry Hansen. He is the editor-in-chief. Tom was... Was funny. Man, Tom was caustic. He would talk through that lens right at you. Patrick Healy is live. With top anchors, Channel 4 launched the first 4 p.m. and 6 a.m. newscasts in the country. This is Today in L.A. Today in L.A., if you look back at the people who have been a part of the program, they're all top-notch individuals. This is News for L.A. at 4. It was an unpioneered territory for a while. The audience was different. The audience was primarily female. We just had a great time. But it's what Channel 4 didn't cover that turned the tide again. That was the decision by management not to cover the car chases. You know what? We've survived. And you know what? You see fewer of those on other people's air. Just residual showers in the local mountains. A key attraction, of course, is weather. I was between the weathermen that had to write backwards with a grease pencil on plexiglass and make the smiley sun face, and the weathermen that worked with computers. That was the drill. You had to write backwards on a piece of glass. There was none of this computerized stuff. We were all excited when we, when technology gave us the black and white still satellite shot. Our latest satellite photo shows that area of clouds in our part of the state. It's amazing how the technology is advancing. The thing out here is, is when there is weather, it's pretty important weather. It's hard to have rain without slide. The living room was transformed into a channel for the muddy hillside runoff almost taking a love seat with it. And it's hard to have dry winds without fires. It's hard to believe that someone actually lived here. Even though there's not a lot of weather in Southern California, I serve a very important function, and that is to be the palate cleanser between the tragedy and the sports. Time now for News Light, the epicenter of American news. And everything I do today is built on the five years I spent here. You, you learn a lot sitting at that desk. How are you? Pat Sajak left Channel 4 to host Wheel of Fortune. Kelly Lang continues to write her best-selling books. It's one of the country's most watched news stories. You charge this hard-earned money. Undercover with our investigative team. Sticky situations caught on tape <laughs> as we celebrate 60 years of television. Congratulations to everyone at NBC4, and I mean everybody. Colleen, Paul, Fritz, Fred, Peter, and Marcia, and Greg, and Cindy, and Jan, and... You see the gunman dressed in black ski mask. Remember where you were? North Hollywood, 1997. Armed for war. Two bank robbers open fire. 17 people are hurt before the suspects are killed. Live on TV. One of the nicest things about shopping by mail order. Channel 4 becomes the center of news when a gunman takes over our set on the air. He's got a gun to his back. To say that it was scary doesn't even do it. Right, it was surreal. Folks, we have, we have someone on the set who's standing here and would like me to read this, this copy which was just handed to me. I see this gun and it was huge. You want to tell me your name or not? What is it? And Gary, where are you from? I remember the text of the statement was completely off the wall. These people, or whatever they are, are, are taking over the, the phone services right now. The CIA is either... And then I start looking at the gun. I'm thinking, is that real? There is no way I can harm anyone with this empty BB gun. Nothing like it had ever been seen before. Live, on television, coast to coast. Look out there. That's bad. That's bad. The Symbionese Liberation Army decided to take on the Los Angeles Police Department. Patty Hearst, of course, was kidnapped by the Symbionese Liberation Army. There is a black male and three white females within the building, all armed, all firing. 
About 1974, police got a tip that the SLA was in a house in Los Angeles. They start lobbing tear gas in there, trying to get them to come out. The house catches on fire. Nobody knows if Patty Hearst is in there or not. Patty Hearst was not there, but in an Anaheim motel. Six SLA members died. No officers were hurt. That is the package that was underneath the bench. Homegrown terrorism is captured again by Channel 4 crews. There has been an explosion in Centennial Park. It happened about 1.20 local time. Okay. I actually witnessed the explosion. It was a large flashbang. All of a sudden, you heard this boom. You could feel the concussion in your chest. And you could absolutely see the fear in everyone's face. As many as 150 to 200 people were hurt. That was an incredible event to cover. We had the, the exclusive on it, and it was NBC's deal. The global spotlight was shining on Southern California in 1984. Los Angeles was host to the Olympic Games. Local athletes were ready for gold. And who should handle the last leg of the journey? Well, none other than the Jews himself, O.J. Simpson. When the Olympics came to L.A., there was concern, would traffic ruin it? The smog would be awful and the athletes would be choking. It was clear sailing when we checked earlier this afternoon. The freeways were never more open. The air seemed to be a little bit better. You could feel the sense of community, the sense of patriotism as the Americans performed in those games. Like Southern California native, diver Greg Luganis. In 1984, having the Olympic Games in my own backyard, yeah, there was a lot of pressure. My goal was to win two gold medals. It was very galvanizing, and I think for a moment, unifying for the city. If you're hiring undocumented workers here. Channel 4's right here. Well, they caught us on camera. Team 4 reports. The spirit of investigative reporting has a long history at Channel 4. We have done what we're supposed to do, which is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. To conduct our investigation, we wired two test cars with hidden cameras. Jiffy Lube is a household name, and we caught them doing what consumers suspected they were doing, but could never prove themselves. There is a camera in here watching you the whole time. The internet can now deliver our stories to millions of people, and they'll get the benefit of our hard work. Hey, where are you going? That's my car. Hidden camera investigation we did on tow truck companies illegally towing people made a, a lot of changes. As a result of our investigation, Congress last year passed a bill giving states more control over tow trucks. We've gone after some very powerful interests in this city and we paid a price for it. It's work honored with awards, including a prestigious Peabody for the Playa Vista project. How much of a danger is there for them? It's wow. an enormous amount of gas surfacing out there. One of the most recent investigations I did uncovered how the drinking fountains at LAUSD, many of them were giving off an unsafe amount of lead. It was an important story that was right in front of us all these years, but it hadn't been uncovered. I'd love one day for Joel and I to work on one story. Joel's at the front door, I'm at the back door, <laughs> we got him. We're gonna do it. <laughs> That's life. Straight from the Channel 4 archives. That's what all the people say. Frank Sinatra. Bad hair, bad clothes. Hairstyles, big and small. Plus, ta -da! what Guys, was that? Surprise moments terrible. as we celebrate 60 years of television. Next. Happy 60th anniversary, NBC4. I hope you'll continue to enjoy my young advertiser-friendly demographic for years to come. I accept the nomination of the Democratic Party. 1960, the L.A. Coliseum. Senator John Kennedy is elected the Democratic presidential candidate. For 60 years, we've brought you events that have shaped our community. In and for the city of Los Angeles. Mayor Tom Bradley's election broke the color barrier. I look at a lot of the development that has taken place in Hollywood, in East Los Angeles, and that's his legacy. Intense political standoffs have filled our streets. Peaceful marches appealed for change. We are poor and we are powerless. He was truly one of the most incredible Californians of the 20th century. For decades, viewers have relied on our weekly political analysis on News Conference. There wasn't a major political figure in America who didn't have to stop at KNBC to be interviewed by me or Bob Abernathy. Ronald Reagan was among them. 
So was Gerald Ford and other presidential hopefuls. It's our guest, Senator Edward Kennedy, Democrat of Massachusetts. We try to break it down so people understand what policy impacts their neighborhood. This is a moment from 1967. You know, Ronald Reagan's traveling in Hollywood's A-list the fundraised. The best, the There's Bob Hope, person. Dean Martin, and Frank Sinatra. I've been up and down and over and out, and I know the things. It would take three campaigns to put him in the White House. We want Reagan! We want Reagan! We want Reagan! 34 years later, we would report his death. The hearst comes out with the flags. It was really sad. There's always been a commitment here to telling stories that are relevant to the community. Exploring critical issues like immigration, fears of terrorism, homelessness. It's hard living without a stove or a fridge. People did not understand before that special how many homeless children there were. Southern California is a huge place. They need a way to tie themselves together, and we are part of that mechanism. Commitment to community took root early. Children's shows and fire safety. How much is a forest worth? Space exploration. There were star-studded specials like I Am an American Day with Johnny Mathis, Lorne Green, and Edward G. Robinson. Coverage of the spectacular cultural events that continue today. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore the rich, colorful lives of California's native peoples. Think of the incredible number of communities from around the world that have come to Los Angeles and said, this is where I want to live. NBC4 presents Fiesta Broadway. The Sunday show explored those communities we did it 90 minutes live every Sunday in a different location. Big names would drop by. Johnny Carson, Lucille Ball. She couldn't have been nicer. It was fantastic. Community involvement extends beyond our studios, like our highly popular and free health fair. Last year, we reached 73,000 people who might not otherwise get treatment. In a selfish way, I think it helps the viewers connect to our station. Community outreach is the best part of my job. Connection to community also extends through Dr. Bruce's medical reports. Susan has type 1 diabetes. Her body does not make insulin. Being a physician journalist, I have the opportunity to give the information and give you the ability to use it in a way so that it won't frighten you. That was never more true than with AIDS. Because of the uh, HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. Everybody was shocked. Everybody was worried. If he can get it, he looks so healthy. And how could I get it? A landmark AIDS series helped ease fears. But the words for goodbye have not yet been found. <sighs> I remember the last day before Don died. There were these kids going to school. And it was so, you know, a poignant moment because Life and death. Laurel's report earned KNBC's first Peabody Award. It is those powerful images that linger in the soul of Southern California. Here now is a look at other memorable moments that we have brought you. The shuttle mission will launch. My God. A minute 15. There's been an explosion. We are the only station live on the air when the Challenger space shuttle exploded. A shaken Jess Marlowe reported the crash of our news chopper. Francis Gary Powers died doing what he liked to do. But that's small comfort for us. For veteran reporter Fernell Chapman, one story struck deep. My perhaps most difficult assignment was Katrina. Um, Sorry. Many have lost their homes. Others have lost more than their homes. They have lost their lives. And that's my hometown. I got to see it firsthand. There's also stories that inspire. Like Marino Angulo. I got to do something with my life. He was just 15 years old and was taking care of all of his brothers and sisters. When I ran into Marino Angulo, 
He was teaching at the high school where he graduated. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How are you? Ay, Dios mío de la vida. <laughs> Marino, who inspired our Beating the Odds series, wanted to surprise Linda and thank viewers for helping him achieve his dream of college. Look at the result. That is probably one of the best things that can happen to a journalist. And there was the baby trapped by war. I'm about to go to Beirut and I get a call from a couple in Chatsworth that says, will you bring our baby back from Beirut? They had adopted a Lebanese orphan. I just felt like John Beard was our only hope. I checked with the lawyer in Beirut and was able to bring the baby back. Merry Christmas. <laughs> To see it and be helpful in some way was, uh, was pretty overwhelming. It's live TV. <laughs> Gaffs, goofs, and belly laughs when we return with our 60th anniversary celebration. But first, this look back at the station football team. I have only the best memories, and I feel deeply rooted to Southern California. Sunday. Open House goes on the hunt for a perfect home for newlyweds looking to start a family. Then, green tips to cleaning your home while saving the planet. Sunday at 4.30 and always on LXTV.com. You ought to see the shoes. <laughs> oh, the shoes. <laughs> bad hair. Bad clothes. Makeup. Clothes. Hair. It's all part of the job. At 6.56, back to your money now. I am amazed at the response we have received to your new hairstyle. What do you call that? <laughs> Air perm. Air perm. In Huntington Beach today. Oh my goodness, I went red, I went long, I went short. Others did too. Yeah, when I first got out there, I had a, a huge fro. In a word, the trial was bizarre. A very young Fernell Chapman, a Fernell Chapman who sported an afro at the time, who had hair. So did John Marshall. And possibly even jail sentences. Not everything goes according to plan on the air. We've dug up classic moments. I happen to think that a reporter has an image, has a role to maintain. Ta da! The guys here decided I should be Shirley Temple. Your water? It's almost brown. You better I have check to your fill... pipes, David. Well, it's not the pipes. Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> no, I beg your pardon. <laughs> My pipes are not rusting out. Um, <laughs> Ugly muck that stuck to everything, even this reporter. <laughs> so Connors took his racket, thanked the referee, and left. And Jimmy wow, Connors took his wow. balls and went home. You might say that. The reporter has no real room for levity. <laughs> How's your chair? Well, my You're chair's going up there, and down. I'm a little bit Jeez. short. You can't seem to get it up. Get the chair off. I got my lollipop, I got my shoes, I got my socks, and I have my pink panties. Dozens of undocumented aliens into custody. Patrick Healy joins us now. He's got a report. He's in our newsroom. Patrick? Actually, Kelly, I'm up with you. Sunny and very hot for most of the weekend, with the exception of the southeastern states. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some sand in there. He should maintain a certain dignity, a certain decorum. Whenever I would do a political story on one of Tom Snyder's news programs, I would always turn to him and say, well, Tom, as you know, the fact is, he didn't know. I'm not having my period. I'm not upset. For the last couple of years, people have written this station. They've called into KNBC. Beginning Monday night in this time period, this chair will be occupied by Paul Moyer and said that Paul Moyer looks something like Tom Snyder or there's a similarity in the deliveries. That's ridiculous, and I'm here to tell you that's not true tonight, November 21st, 1974. There are simply some things a reporter does not do or say, and Tom Snyder has never learned that lesson. Okay, did all of that really happen here? Are you kidding me? Many times over. Yes, you're right. We had some special moments, and we shared them all with you. Southern California is indeed a very special place that we are happy to call home. And we thank you for allowing us to be part of your family for the past 60 years. And in the future, we look forward to remaining your trusted friend. So for now, for the entire NBC4 family, we thank you and good night. God willing, this, this station will always be special to the people of Los Angeles. 60 years means that we've got some, um, we've got some history together.
To do this work, you have to have a, a genuine love of people. I am thankful every day that I had the opportunities that I had. This place has given me the opportunity to tell tens of thousands of stories. KNBC continues to do a great job and become a, a real important part of what's going on here in Southern California. There is a commitment from this station to make sure we cover the right story. I guess it's impossible for an inanimate object to have a soul, but the station really does have a soul, and it's the people. God bless them all. They're wonderful folks, and I miss, I miss them. I walked into a, an environment that was exceptional for a young sportscaster. When I walk into the studios at 3000 West Alameda Boulevard in Burbank, I feel like I'm home again. I love Los Angeles, and I love California so much that it hurts and I have loved KNBC television news so much that it hurts. Please don't forget me, else I can't come home again. Goodbye.